a neurosurgeon planning to carry out the first human head transplant has unveiled a virtual reality system that will prepare patients for life in a new body. Dr. Sergio Canavero wants to carry out the operation next year and believes it could lead to people paralyzed from the neck down being able to walk again. Russian wheelchair user Valery Spiridonov has volunteered to take part in the first operation which would see his head frozen to stop brain cells from dying and tubes connected to support key arteries and veins. The spinal cord will then be cut, repaired and fused onto a donor body and the skin stitched back together. If successful, the process could still lead to unexpected psychological reactions from the patient as they get used to their new life. So a virtual reality world to prepare them for a different body is being developed. Created by Chicago-based firm Inventum Bioengineering Technologies, the new VR system would enable patients to take part in sessions for months before an operation. Inventum Chief Executive Alexander Pavlovsik said, In preparing the patient of heaven to transition into a new body, virtual reality training will be used before the surgical procedure to prevent the occurrence of unexpected psychological reactions. We are combining the latest advancements in virtual reality to develop the world's first protocol for preparing the patient for bodily freedom after the transplantation procedure. Prospective patient Mr. Spiridonov said, Virtual reality simulations are extremely important as this kind of system allows us to get involved into action and learn fast and efficiently. As a computer scientist I am extremely certain that it is an essential technology for the Heaven Project. Dr. Canavero, director of the Turin Advanced Neuromodulation Group, showcased the latest milestone during a conference at the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow on Friday. He said, this virtual reality system prepares the patient in the best possible way for a new world that he will be facing with his new body, a world in which he will be able to walk again. The procedure for cutting the spinal cord is said to be so delicate, with the need to avoid nerves, that a knife that can control cuts to a micrometer has been developed by Farid Amarouche at the University of Illinois. Dr. Canavera said, Professor Amarouche has developed probably the sharpest and most precise blade in the world which will allow a clear cut of the spinal cord with a minimal impact on the nerves. A cutting system that is innovative and very inventive. It is another milestone on the journey to make the first human head transplant possible. In September, the controversial neurosurgeon outlined plans to conduct Frankenstein experiments to reanimate human corpses to test his technique. Dr. Canavero and his collaborators discussed trials to test whether it is possible to reconnect the spinal cord of the head to another body with tests that will stimulate the nervous system in fresh human corpses with electrical pulses. However, the Russian man who has volunteered to have the first transplant also revealed that his girlfriend is opposed to him having the operation. The aim of the surgery is to first cut the spinal cord and then repair it before using electrical or magnetic stimulation to reanimate the nerves and even movement in the corpse. In an article for the Surgical Neurology International, Dr. Canavero and his colleague in South Korea and China drew parallels to the infamous story of Frankenstein where electricity is used to reanimate the fictional monster. He pointed to experiments conducted in the 1800s using the corpses of criminals who had been hung as proof such tests could be successful. Dr. Canavero and his colleague said, a fresh cadaver might act as a proxy for a live subject as long as a window of opportunity is respected. It also implies that the process of deathly disintegration is not an immediate process. We name this effect the Frankenstein effect. It comes as Dr. Canavero and his colleagues have announced the results of experiments to show they can reconnect the spinal cord after it was severed in a dog. A series of research papers published in September detail how the animal was able to walk and wag its tail three weeks after being paralyzed from the neck down. Dr. Canavero claims the results prove the technique used, known as Gemini spinal cord fusion, will also work in humans to fuse two ends of a spinal cord together. This could then be used to connect a transplanted head to a donor body, allowing a paralyzed patient to regain control of a body. Valery Spiridonov, a 30-year-old Russian computer programmer suffering from a form of spinal muscular atrophy called Wernick Hoffman, has volunteered to undergo the surgery. However, the claims have been met with skepticism by many in the scientific community who warn the experiments in animals do not yet prove a head transplant will work in humans. It is unclear exactly how completely the dog's spinal cord was severed before it was treated and its injury is some way from having a total head transplant. Writing in the journal Surgical Neurology
Immunology International, Dr. Canavero said the results of the experiment should dispel the hysteria around full head transplants once and for all. He said, while of course these results are in need of duplication, there can be no doubt that this new batch of data confirmed that a spinal cord, once severed, can be refused with useful behavioral recovery. Despite these exciting animal experiments, the proof of the pudding rests in human studies. He said that initial tests will be carried out using the bodies of brain-dead organ donors where the spinal cord will be severed and treated to see if it can be repaired. He explained how techniques such as electrically stimulating movements through the spinal cord or with magnets applied to the brain, known as transcranial magnetic stimulation, will be used to test the connections. If the spinal cord has reconnected, such stimulation should produce tiny electrical pulses in the nerves further beneath the point where the spinal cord was cut. Dr. Canavero said, we believe this has a neuropathological basis. He first announced his plans to conduct head or body transplant in 2013 and he said in 2015 he believed the challenges involved were surmountable. Together with colleagues in South Korea, China and the US, he set up the Head Anastomosis Venture or Heaven project to develop the techniques needed to carry out such an operation. Earlier this year, Dr. Canavero claimed scientists in China had performed a head transplant on a monkey where they connected up the blood supply between the head and the new body. They did not, however, reconnect the spinal cord and the animal was unable to regain movement. Dr. Xiaoping Ren, a neurosurgeon in China who Dr. Canavero claimed had conducted the work later said it could be some time before the first transplant in humans will be carried out. Speaking last year, he said that experiments in rats have only had a 30% to 50% survival rate. He told Xinhuana.com, some rats survived a few hours, the longest is one day. In a new set of papers published in the journal Surgical Neurology International and edited by Dr. Canavero, researchers in South Korea and the U.S. claimed to have reconnected the spinal cords in mice and in a dog. Dr. Siyun Kim, a neurosurgeon at Kwangkuk University in Seoul who has been collaborating with Dr. Canavero, severed the spinal cords of 16 mice. They injected a chemical called polyethylene glycol into the gap between the cut spinal cord and half of the mice. After four weeks, five of the eight mice who received PEG regained some ability to move but three of the mice died. Those who did not receive PEG also died. Similar tests using an enhanced version of PEG was given to five rats with severed spinal cords and the South Korean researchers showed electrical signals passed down it after treatment. However, four of the rats were killed in a flood at the team's laboratory and so they were not able to see if movement was restored. In a final experiment the South Korean team tested the PEG solution in a dog after its spinal cord was almost completely severed. They claimed 90% of the cord had been severed while the dog was initially paralyzed. Three days later the team report it was able to move its limbs. By three weeks it could walk and whack its tail. There was no control in the experiments, according to new scientists. However, other scientists have raised serious concerns about the results. Dr. Jerry Silver, a neuroscientist at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio, told the magazine, These papers do not support moving forward in humans. They claim they cut the cervical cord 90% but there's no evidence of that in the paper, just some crude pictures. Others said it could still at least eight years before a human head transplant could realistically be carried out. However, speaking on ITV's Good Morning Britain in September, Dr. Canavero said his team intended to conduct experiments on dead bodies before attempting a head transplant with Valerie Spirignot. He said the operation on a living patient would only go ahead when there was at least a 90% chance of them surviving the procedure. He said, the first humans to receive this sort of head transplant will not be Valerie, but we will just be performing the first on brain dead organ donors. So the first live head transplant will come about somewhere where we'll be able to transfer the head of a brain dead organ donor onto the body of a decapitated brain dead organ donor. So only after extensive cadaver rehearsals and this final proof of principal surgery on brain dead organ donors, we will move on Valerie. Actually the list of patients is so long that we can't actually begin to give you all the names including several patients from England. However, his plans to reanimate corpses will doubtless require ethical approval and may pose a barrier to the experiments.